Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, a vision of opulence now lost to time, decay, and entropy. And this is episode 11 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer, in which we'll continue to explore these mysterious agri-gardens, having uh, gleaned all of the secrets we can possibly glean from K-Hax's own flat, and uh, having gone back to our previous technique, let's say, of uh, just wandering around until we find stuff. Which is, to be honest, probably more effective than most methods used by actual police. At least for the purpose of, you know, actually solving crimes. A protest letter. A manifesto letter written by protesting workers. Interesting. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure remnants are always connected to ghosts and that these are some of the side quests in the game, so... Well, based on the one example we've had so far of a remnant and also a ghost. So, I, sus oh, I suspect there'll be a ghost around here somewhere. Dance, come on, get down on the floor. We've taken it upon ourselves to move a little more. Dance, get up, show us what you got. We're gonna rock your party, now let's take it to the top. Oh, forget it. If you're not gonna beatbox, I'm off. <laughs> I used to, I, fun fact, you know, a hidden secret SCA plays law uh, revealed. I used to beatbox. I haven't really done it in years, so I don't know that I still can, but I used to be all right. I was pretty good. I had some solid beats. Um, let's see what's in this vending machine. A three. My favorite size of paper. Bizarre lychee. A lychee flavoured soft drink. An image appears. A riverbank. Blazing sunshine. Baseball. A train passes. Distant apartment blocks in the summer haze. Man, some of these are pretty hardcore vibes, I gotta say. Some of the writing in this game has underwhelmed me. A lot of the character writing I've I found somewhat underwhelming, and a lot of the cosmic nonsense I've found kind of trite, at least so far. But in all honesty, I uh, I am in love with the incidental writing of the descriptions of things. That's, I believe, two cranks down. Two cranks down, one crank left to go. And not a single crank left for me. Continuing to make a bunch of failed jumps, I guess. Also, I love these leaf textures because every time I walk past them, uh, I think they're like weed textures and I'm about to make a 420 joke, they, but they're not, they're palm leaves, uh, which are very suitable and entirely appropriate to the whole kind of like uh, tropical American beach and also Japanese suburb vibe of this place. But uh, yeah, tragically they are not. I'm not entirely sure what they're supposed to represent. I mean, I suppose this could be the entirely- the, the fir world's first entirely palm leaf based uh, agricultural monopoly, since all agricultural product on the island is produced here at this farm. Maybe it- maybe it progresses further underground. Maybe they have internal hydroponics facilities for the majority of the rest of the vegetables they create. Um, and up here is just for the special- special reserve. Dead Nebula's special reserve. The palm leaves you know you deserve. I think that was three cranks actually, so I should be able to solve that puzzle now, but I do... Just want to finish hoovering these up. Proud pin badge. A pin badge made to celebrate Perfect 25. Ah yes, the curiously named Perfect 25, just like all the other perfects that we've seen so far. None of which have been perfect. I still don't... In, I don't understand why it is that, oh hey these don't have collision that's surprising uh, I still don't really understand why it is these people think that uh, island sequence 25 is going to be truly perfect they get closer every step but surely surely true, true perfection is unattainable right um, and if the previous island is flawed so heavily as this you know which it clearly is there's no reason to think that the very the very next island would be, you know, the final perfection rather than merely another step on that incredibly long road. 
you know, that total Zeno's paradox of, ex of, of perfection, right? It's impossible because this, the closer you get, the further it is. I'm just rambling now. Anyway. You notice the clouds? What about them? They break. You see them flicker every so often. This reality is dying. The wheels are starting to come off. What else is going to break? Everything and nothing, probably. Something to look forward to. I hope that this isn't going to be yet another story about ultimately accepting the necessity of death and senescence. Um, there have been a lot of them lately, ranging from the uh, extremely kind of anodyne and uninteresting to the actually like thematically interesting and valid, you know? But it's still a really common theme. Like, even some of the best movies I've watched in the past couple years have had this ultimate, like, uh, thesis about reality. You know, hey, death does come for us all. Everything falls apart in the end. What are you going to do? Um, and I, I kind of like would like to see a bit more railing against that rather than uh, the constantly reinforced concept, the only way to kind of survive and continue existing as a person within within the understanding that in the end everything ends uh is is acceptance total acceptance of that why not why not <laughs> why not go to your grave resenting the fact that you have to go to your grave at all you know anyway time to go crank some cranks and see what we can find All right, let's crank it up. That should flush the drains. I wonder if anything has floated up. Well, sometimes I do wonder if this game has been not dumbed down exactly, but I, I think that there is a, an insecurity on the part of the writers that they are a little bit worried that uh, people will not be able to figure out that, yeah, the, the grate with a thing in it is, is in fact where something will show up. What's a tablet doing shoved down a drain? It boots, at least. The login sequence authenticates the user as Lydia. Did she dump this down here? Accessing. Detected corruption of Lydia Daybreak tablet. Checking for restore point. Restore point found. Safe backup found. Restoring messages. Lost message. Sender. Witness to the end. Recipient. Lydia Daybreak. Attachment recovered. Downloading. Starlight's pulled a message from the backup. A message from witness to Lydia. The message is blank, but there's an attachment. It's a data key that allows access to a specific nightmare computer. One on the beach, apparently. The code looks like it's designed for remote access rather than a physical handshake. Bop, 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 bop. Peculiar. Why was witness sending Lydia this? Now, why is this automatically listed as evidence relating to the second seal? There's no reason... Yeah, there's no reason to assume that anything to do with the beach is to do with the second holy seal, right? Because we don't even know what the later holy seals are. There's, I mean, there's a lot of weird shit happening here. There's no reason to assume it relates to any of the seals directly. That's kind of weird. Um, I wonder if that in indicates that I've sequence broken slightly. I, I, I wonder to some extent all the way through this game uh, like how sequence broken it can be or be, be or become really because I do just um I do just wander around and stick my nose in where it's not wanted. I spoke previously about that kind of fitting in with the the archetype of the investigator and uh, constantly constantly exploring, constantly questioning everything, and how that gels with the instinct of the the player of games to just always be. Uh, you know, you solve the puzzle that you find in front of you, even if there's no direct plot element pushing you towards it. There's not necessarily any reason. My my controller's breaking again. That's frustrating. I'm sure I'm replugging it. Oh yeah. Um, the uh, the <laughs> there's not really any reason why Lady Love Dies would decide to switch on the uh, the hat the cranks. You know, um, there's something down the grate. I'm sure there's random trash down the grates at like all of the. Uh, horrible workplaces that the poor citizens are forced to endure. There's no reason to assume that one random thing dropped down. You know, it could be someone's car keys for all we know. Except there's only one car on the entire island, of course. Which, I guess, perhaps, is uh, what makes it truly a paradise. Want to know what I think about crime? 
I'm gonna. I'm. I was mean to him in the past, and it didn't go well. So I'm gonna be encouraging. Hit me. It's in the smiles, love dies. You start breaking smiles, and I'll bet you find the answer. I'm not into smashing faces in. It was a metaphor or abstract or something. Stop being literal. Break the smiles. So I mean, that's not actually bad advice. Uh, oh shit! This must be the communications antenna. Fantastic. So what he's telling us is like, um, whatever people are smug about, whatever they are hiding behind, once we get past that, uh, then we start to learn stuff. Island sequence 10. Humanity's god hunters learn of our secret islands. We hid from them for so long, but now they know. A time of fear. Interesting. Okay, wow, that... That fucking blows the doors off a lot of what we're learning about the nature of this world. Let's just unlock this fast travel real quick. Fast travel unlocked. Mm. Like Wonderful skyline. Skylines offer infinite possibilities. I think it's about time we actually changed our our skin. So yeah, um, this an this asks a lot of questions and it <laughs> answers a lot of questions. It has me wondering. So humanity consider themselves separate to these people, these weird extra-dimensional godlings, and um, presumably fear them and wish to destroy them, which makes sense since humans are constantly abducted, and since the gods themselves are supposedly evil or, or malevolent, or at least indifferent to humanity. Um, there certainly seems not to have been any kind of particular love, or indeed love lost between them. Uh, so. This whole paradise dealio is ultimately just the kind of vanity project of a small handful of iconoclastic humans who, or I guess reverse iconoclasts, who are desirous of worshipping these things that the rest of humanity has decided are going to destroy us and must be lost. Alright, let's see what's up here. Um, I'm just going to check if there's anything up top before I fiddle with the nut. Whoops, nightmare computer. Huh, oh, apparently if you jump you can go through ladders, good to know. I wonder if I'll need a new uh, upgrade before I can access this one. Oh, I can use this to verify cell phone records. It's not enabled right now, but there should be a computer around here somewhere that I can use to turn it back on. I see how it is. I'm a ding dang fool. I need Cosmos. Okay, so I need the Cosmos upgrade before I can come back here and verify anyone's goddamn cell phone records. So, I think that's everything there is to find here. That's everything I've seen so far. I thought for sure there would be a warehouse here that would be a second warehouse that I might be able to find that long lost dead nebula upgrade uh, from. That's the only lead on an upgrade I have apart from the fact that uh, Crimson Acid is willing to sell me one, which... I mean, like, I don't know how much that's going to cost, I don't know how difficult that's going to be to attain. You know, why why stress myself over that when I could just get one for free out of the vending machine? Oops. Some kind of message in a bottle, let's see. These seem to be lyrics. The theme of the song appears to be doing anything you can to leave your home and get away. Breaking the cycle, finding something new, going on a shopping spree, never coming back. Signed by the daybreaks. Lydia and Sammy sound like they're unhappy here. Maybe they're looking for a way out of the syndicate. Well, yeah, sure, I guess that is a motive. Um, I still haven't talked to them, god. I still have, uh, let's see. I've have to. I've talked to Sam Daybreak, I've got... I wonder what those markers are. Those look like new markers. Uh, need to talk to Lydia, need to talk to Crimson, need to talk to Aikiko and Henry. And witness. Oh god. <laughs> I've barely begun my work day. Anyway, I'm going to take a look up on this uh, bridge in just a moment. But first, I'm going to come back here and grab a couple things that I missed previously. And then I'll have a bit of a think about where to go next, because um, the stuff I found there is pointing me towards the beach, but uh, that's stuff to do with Lydia. Island sequence 008, removed from history. If tw if island sequence 25 is supposed to be the final island sequence, why did they bother giving it uh, three digits in the uh, 
in the classification system, huh? Maybe. Maybe if you come straight here, you can find the thing, and if you don't, then um, Crimson Acid steals it and takes it away so that she can sell it back to you for profit later. I mean, that's probably what I would do if I was her. Not that I am. You've been switching the skins on Starlight? What business is that of yours? Chill, I'm just looking out for fellow Generation Remixers. Can't just have the standard thing these days, gotta make it yours. A stick of this, custom wallpaper that. Shows you've personality or something? I don't know. Well, the flaw with that concept is that ultimately choosing uh, a wallpaper from a predetermined list of wallpapers considered safe by whoever's in charge, I guess, is not actually expressing your individuality because you're still just picking off a list. This is one of the fundamental flaws between modern digital culture and what it's becoming. Uh, and older digital culture, which had a much stronger emphasis on customizability and having your own thing and being able to change and make your own thing however you wished. The internet of the mid-2000s is fundamentally different to the internet that now exists um, in pretty extreme ways, and that's a major part of it. Because, you know, you can't... you can't take a photo in this game. You can't use your laptop to take a photo and have that photo be your, your background. You, you're reliant on the ones other people have made. Um, this, is a, this is a pretty interesting and fundamental problem in a lot of games, but amusingly, games are one of the media in which it's easiest to solve. It's not especially difficult to have a uh, some kind of internal system in a game for just taking pictures. They add it to all sorts of games all the time. Um, and a game simple like this seems like fairly easy. After all, it's built into Windows that you can screenshot pretty much anything. So, um, you know, it wouldn't be that difficult to let you just take photos and then apply those photos as your own wallpaper paper if you wanted. Maybe wolves did it. The council murder? Yeah, wolves are crazy. They tear all sorts of stuff up. A pack of wild wolves broke into the council building, bypassed all of the holy seals and tore the council apart. I can hear the sarcasm in your voice. I don't like it. I'm trying to help expand your thinking. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit myself to actual reality and the things that could plausibly happen in it. Wolves don't even exist on this island. Fine, throw it back in my face. So, yeah, um... It's kind of curious. Shinji still seems to be a kind of a Socratic dialogue that the, the developer is having with the player. Remember, think big! Or think small, if you were inclined previously to think big. Think outside the box, you know? Tinkle outside the binkle, as they say. Uh, I don't think anyone says that. What was I going to do? Oh yeah, <laughs> I was going to go back up. So, I'm just going to look around this corner real quick, and then I will go do the thing I said. This one song on the soundtrack always sounds really different to me. It doesn't sound so much like uh, the jazzy uh, vaporwave vibes of most of the rest of this uh, game. It sounds almost like a like the background theme to like a '90s RPG, JRPG specifically. Even I want that. I want that crystal. Platform hero, hell yeah. Amazing at jumping. That's me. Anyway, I think I should probably devote at some point a couple episodes to just talking to the people that I haven't talked to yet. Um, I think that might be a good idea. Um, I feel like I'm pushing a little bit too far into finding random puzzles to solve. Which feels unnatural to this character and to the trajectory the game has been providing for me so far. I think it would maybe make more sense if I had finished talking to each of the people first. However, it is starting to look more and more like my prediction of a total conspiracy is going to turn out to be what's going on. After all, every single person we've met so far is tied into the crime in some way, uh, except for Yuri, who is still nevertheless acting suspicious and therefore has every reason for us to put suspicion on him. In fact, the only reason, we, the only person other than him we haven't tied into this directly already 
is, of course, uh, well, <laughs> Henry Division, but then that makes sense given what we've decided about the, the nature of his guilt. Not prejudicially, just, uh, you know, temporarily for now. Anyway, um, yeah, is, uh, is, uh, is the witness who we haven't talked to. And that's even, no, hang on, that's not even true because the witness himself is involved with, I, with, uh, Carmelina in the secret demon lab. Which is obviously secret and also super duper double illegal. And also seems to me like it's the kind of thing that someone would do if they wanted to get good at like either putting demons in guys or aggravating guys that demons have been put in. In fact, who's to say? This has only just occurred to me right now, but who's to say that the uh, demon outbreak uh, re the, of Henry Division 10... a thousand? However goddamn many years ago uh, that put this island on the path to um, imperfection uh, who's to say that was really his fault even back then? Like there was literally a demon lab next door. That lab might predate the uh, entombment of uh, the Dead Zone. Like, what if that lab has been there since before Henry Division's whole dealio? What if something escaped from it and did these things to him? Symbols of the Witness. The end of something is priceless. It can never be experienced again. It can never be traded. What if things shouldn't end, though? Yep, that sounds like a theme to me, baby. Alright, let's talk to this ghost real quick, and that will be the end for today. My dreams filled with endless images. Working at the power plant, a cursed life. The assignment we all fear. Worse than the deep factory. Your thoughts disappear, replaced by lives you haven't lived. Lives you won't lead. Lives you might lead. Time disappears. The same day recycled. The same day disappears. My mind broke. A million shards. I can't ascend to heaven without knowing who I am. I just remember my fish tank. Outside my apartment. Near the convenience store. I loved those fish. Who am I? Well, that seems like a really easy puzzle to solve. But also, that sounds a hell of a lot like an extremely blunt metaphor for alienated labour. Thus, uh laying bare once again the um, anti-capitalist under underpinnings of uh, the themes of this game, which I talked briefly about in the past and I'm not going to dwell on right now. What's that up there? I should try and, try and find a way up and grab that, whatever it is. It looks valuable. Anyway, so that's going to be it from me for today. Next episode I'm going to explore this bridge, I guess, and then a desperately, desperately attempt to get myself to go talk to a just another goddamn human being, or indeed goat lady, if that's the case. So, that's going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall leave you tonight with the vision of the gulls floating ominously in the air. Thanks for watching. Bye. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.